Hi there everyone, welcome back to my world. This video is all about a question that I get in my inbox quite regularly. It's all about this old track that I uh, did in 2000, well, released in 2000, which is called Inner Space. It's available on 20 years, by the way, so uh, my compilation. And um, yeah, lots of questions about how did you make this bass line? And I'm gonna let you hear that if possible. Where is my output level here? And uh, let's just play it for you guys. Okay, sounds a bit vocal, filtered and everything. Actually, it's that simple. And um, in this video, I'm gonna show it to you how to replicate that with virtual instruments nowadays. Back in 99, I used the JP8000 from Roland, the Super Sow doubled up with a Sow Wave, an octave, uh, an octave down. And I put that through um, an effects unit from Korg called the AM8000R, if I remember correctly. You, you gotta Google this just for the, for the sake of it, if, you, if you're interested, if you're curious. Um, and I actually, the, the, the whole sound wasn't side-chained, it was, it was just that I put both kick and bass line in the same compressor which is uh, basically, you know, it would compress the bass a bit just every time you have a, a kick. So that was a secret, but how to make that bass line? Well, as simple as that, JP8000 um, is not available in software yet. I believe that they will come up uh, with that on the, on the Roland Cloud um, one of these days. But we have a good alternative from Beep Street, and it's called Sunriser. And uh, here it is. If you don't know it, Google it. So beepstreet.com Sunriser. It's a perfect, almost perfect replica of the JP8000. Especially uh, the Super Sow, it's really close to the original due to the fact that, and that's a big secret about the GP8000, by the way. If it cuts through the mix, there is a good reason for that. Listen to the sound carefully. It is mono. Yes, the Super Sow, even that, the unison, you know, thing, is completely mono in the middle. And this is why it cut through the mix 99% of the time. <laughs> yeah, as simple as that. So perfect for bass lines. And on top of that, I found um, a Korg effect that I could use to, um, to do the talking modulation. So here we go. First the notes, it's actually that simple. And uh, let's check it out here. Uh, and we are gonna recreate that from scratch even because I'm a bit yeah, I love making. Yeah, in it. So it was written written in C minor. You can see here, plus a bit. Of, yeah, as simple as that. So what we need, as I said, a mixture of two oscillators, one on super sow. The other one, 12 semitones lower, an octave lower, that's for the regular sound. We put them through a filter, not 24 dB, 12 dB, just like the original JP8000. A bit of envelope on the filter with a short decay, no attack. Bit of release just for the sake of it. Here we go. And... Um, Let's listen to it just for now and uh, adapt the sound gradually. Um, doesn't sound like it, but now watch this. Okay, now the amplitude. Oh. Listen to it.
already pretty close. And now I just need to add this effect from Korg called MDEX, which is pretty much a replica of the AM8000R that I that was using in the studio. It was very inexpensive for that time. It was like about 400 euros for that unit or 300. I don't remember, but you can Google it just in case. Talking moderator was the effect. Assistance with We're getting close already. Use the LFO here. Tempo sync. And no resonance. To, is to mix it up with the dry signal. A bit of reverb, and uh, I would go for uh, the, the Tal reverb because it's really reminiscent of that dirty 90s dance sound and everything. And. Uh, Not too wide. Everything is a question of, you know, good balance. Pretty much there, I guess. Let's listen to it. A bit, of, a bit more of this and that, but of course, digital version and everything. Of course, there is no mixing yet either, which changes the game a lot. And um, as I said, the whole thing went through a compressor together with a kick drum. So every time the kick drum hits, the bass line disappears. That was sidechain before the, before the time of sidechain. It was possible, but I didn't know about that because I was completely inexperienced, just like 90% of, uh, of the producers in Belgium right, uh, back, back in the day. And um, yeah, sidechain was something completely unknown to me. And uh, so I did it that way. <laughs> that was so hardcore. Uh, and there it is. Bit of mixing. And the rest is a bit of details here and there, but you know, that's that's a magic of, you know, I, I cannot recreate for a hundred percent a sound that I make like twenty years ago. It's uh, it's a bit overkill, but we are pretty much there actually. So this is how I did that baseline, very very simple, and um, I'm a bit sad because yeah, this is not something I get to hear a lot in the dance well in full. 4-4 four, four dance music nowadays and uh, I miss it badly. Thanks a lot for watching. Uh, see you next time, same place in the, in a future video. If you like what you saw, uh, please hit the subscribe button. That would do me a favor as I'm building my community in, on, on YouTube. Thanks a lot and uh, see you next time. Bye.